nice to meet you all. Uh, guys, the movie was absolutely awesome. I had a great blast watching it and shed some tears as well. Uh, first, I'm going to ask Mika. Uh, I wanted to find out what it was that drew you to this project and the character of Brooke and how it resonated with you personally. Um, the movie, uh, I guess just the project as a whole really felt uh, like super reminiscent of all the movies that I grew up watching, like, you know, the coming of age, 80s, 90s comedies that I loved in my childhood. So I was like, okay, this would be really sick to do. Um, and also Adam having written it and being set to direct it, like, that's always great. I mean, I feel like it just in his, sorry, it's a, my cat's doing shit. Uh, in, <laughs> it, it, you could see it like written on the page, how like, how strong of a vision of a vision Adam had and so like that's always very comforting going into something and so I was like oh that'd be really great this seems like a very stress-free thing to do um and then in terms of Brooke I don't know I've kind of been saying that like Brooke read as like a much cooler version of myself and so I was like you know like the coolest the coolest version of me that I could possibly be so I was like oh this also seems like something really fun and I hadn't really played a character like so similar to myself um in my adult life so yeah I guess all those kind of things it just seemed like uh things were just gonna work out well like it just seemed like everything was gonna go smoothly and like I knew I knew like the sentiment that Adam was trying to share and like I knew where Brooke was coming from so I was like I don't know this just seems like personal to me as well no, that that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Adam, I'm going to ask about your influences when you were writing this because you took us back to 1991 and these guys get to experience the look and feel of 1991 there. Like, what was that process like for you to see that? Like, that must have been amazing. Because the so much of it was based on actual things that had happened in my childhood. I took like note cards and I just put them all over my wall and I had all of the things that I wanted to try to include in the script that I thought were like fun tidbits from when we, when I grew up with my best friend. So some of the things like jump on our bikes into the pool or you'll see real beer or uh, fuck dogs, like all of these things were actual things, the gambling at the racetrack and, and oh. all of it, these were smoking cigarettes with my, you know, with my friend getting caught, you know, like all of those types of things. So it started out on note cards and I just was like, it was like highlights of things that like were bullet point things that stuck out in my mind. And then I spent a great deal of time stitching together like a narrative that would work, that would still encapsulate all of those little things that are very sensory for, for me that I could remember and then hopefully pass on to Mika and Connor. Um, and and Gabe and Nick is sort of, you know, just this sensory experience. And we actually shot in my hometown. So they were able to pick up on the vibe, that small town life and, and how things look and feel there, like really, really quickly. Ah, that's amazing. You can, you can clearly see it in the movie as well. Connor, amazing performance, dude. Uh, gave me tears, made me laugh. There's a scene that had me cracking up and I don't know how you probably kept a straight face when the parents go into the auction mode. How many, how, how was that experience for you? Cause that was hilarious on the screen. Insane, honestly, every every scene that, that I did uh, with Jillian Vigman and David Costable was just as crazy as it turned out on screen, it was, quadruply crazy on set. I mean, the the takes that didn't get used were probably unusable because of how insane Jillian is in the best way. I mean, yeah, there were there were ones that I think we were all just laughing. I mean, we knew it wasn't going to be in the movie and Adam would just let it run and we would just be like, all right, we're this we're just letting this is just pure entertainment. And we were just going through it. It was so fun. It's wild. I learned a lot. Honestly, um, Jillian is an improv master. That's 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 absolutely brilliant. Because going back to Adam, when there's some of the scenes with Gabe and Connor, you're like, do you let them rip and let them just go for it? No, the, everything is scripted. <laughs> no, I mean, and really they, good. in a good way. They're both of them are not real improv actors. They're not. I don't think. I mean, at least it 
at this point in their careers that I don't think that they've messed with it all that much. And it's a specific, it's a specific thing. If you're going to do that, people like Jillian, I worked with Mary, Mary Lynn Ricegub on the last film. Those are seasoned improv actors like second city annoyance. Like they show up and that's, and they can just riff and do that. I think, um, for, for snack shack, everything was very scripted as was dinner. Wow. Uh, that's there's, that's insane because it comes off really well on the screen. So like the rela relationship between Brooke and AJ, like some of those scenes, that's yeah, a test to their, exactly. To their acting, but, but no, that I like the control of the page and I have right with a specific rhythm in mind for everything and editorials kind of the same way. Um, but yeah, there was very little between my last two films, very little improvisation. The previous two wow. films, complete improvisation, no script on either of the two that I did prior. So different ways, different work. I love improv. I really do. I could do things yeah. with just bullet points and no script. I'm fine with that. But for, for both of these films, they were they were very scripted and followed to a, to a T. Wow. That's well, it came off screen, looked like it was great fun. And like my other question to all of you was like, there are moments in this movie where it hard hits as well because of the coming of age story as well and learning new things. What would you like the audience to take from that? I'll start with Brooke. Um, from like from the the message like, of the story as well. Yeah, I think it's just that. I I think it's really just um meant to kind of remind you of what this like weird turbulent time when you're a young adult or a teenager is like you know you're you're like having your first crush you're falling in love for the first time you're figuring out how to navigate your personal relationships with your friends and how to set boundaries mm -hmm. and and becoming an individual and you know it's it's a crazy time because you're like parents are still in the mix and so that's a you know that's a whole other you know, obstacle that you have as a teenager that you don't really have when you're older. And um, so I think it's, it's just like, you know, I feel like we've all forgotten what it really was like to be 14 or 15 and just how like horrible and awkward, but also really great it is. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like, it definitely made me think about um, a lot of those like relationships and friendships that I had in high school. And so I think that's just, just kind of reminding you of how important that time of your life was how important those people were no that's cool and apologies i called you brooke mika my bad <laughs> uh adam your 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 take on uh, the messaging i mean I, it, as an artist like when people leave the theater and it sparks a dialogue about their own childhoods that's the biggest gift for me like listening to what uh, hearing people relate it to their own coming of mm -hmm. age experience like immediately and it's like this is so universal with summer jobs first love first loss it's it's the it's a very well-rounded coming of age experience so when people leave the theater and they're excited to share their own experiences with each other and with me like if i'm involved in it that's a that's i guess as an artist that's it's amazing uh, music to my ears that's as, as high apex as it gets as people see your your film and, and it sparks a dialogue about their own lives and what that's amazing grow. Connor, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, everything everyone said. Um, I think it's cool to play. I really realized actually after we've kind of gone through some of the release in, in the States here that that there's so much like, not I guess you could say beauty, but in like being 14 because there's it's all that kind of matters. And I think Snack Shack gets to bring the excitement of living in a space where your life matters the most while also um, throughout the story expanding beyond that. I feel like adult characters have to deal with the rest of the world, whereas in coming of age stories, you get to focus on just that world because it feels yeah. like So yeah, you get to be transported. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you. Great movie.